Last week I ordered this X-T3 and it showed up broken. Now, I tried everything to fix it. I tried updating the software. The firmware was up to date. I talked to Fuji about it. They said the camera is fried, that it's most likely the motherboard. I couldn't get past the initial setup screen. I could set the date, but then it wouldn't work. So I had to order another one. This was frustrating because it was my first weekend off in like a few months from shooting professionally and I wanted to go out and enjoy photography for myself. It's okay, I ordered a new one. I'm filming, I'm filming with it now and it's great, but it has a burnt out pixel on the rear screen. And although it's not a huge deal to me, I don't think anyone wants to spend, you know, $1,500 on a camera that has any issues at all. Plus, considering it, I already got one that didn't work at all, it's a little concerning. I'm not gonna make a statement like Fuji quality issues or, you know, they have quality issues or it's because they're made in China now or any of that. I don't know. I may have just been really unlucky. So, that's all I have to say on that. Moving forward, I want to give you guys some first impressions on the camera as a professional photographer that shoots with Canon. So first of all, build quality is great. Uh, I have nothing negative to say about it. It doesn't scream like Leica or anything at me. Um, I think the bar is higher than this camera has set, but the build quality is great and I'm not going to say it's poorly built or worse built than any of the main camera brands. Personally, I don't think it is. I think it's got a good feel to it. That said, I think the Canon, my Canon 5Ds have had a better feel to them. They have a better weight to them. They feel more substantial. This may be subjective, so don't go crazy on me, but that's my personal experience. And I'm not talking about, well, just because they're bigger cameras. I understand this is a smaller camera. I do want a camera that's lighter. I think it's great for non-pro work, and I'm not saying this is not a professional camera, but to go out and shoot for myself, I don't want to bring a 5D with a massive lens. This is a great camera for that. Um, okay, ergonomics. I do like the tactile experience of the dials, but that said, it doesn't mean it makes for a, more, a smoother operating experience. It just doesn't. You have to reposition your hand to change the dials. You, I guess, can kind of use it as a rear dial that way, but it's not very intuitive. Uh, a Fuji rep told me, because I had asked him about this before, um, if I can pro, what can I do about this? He said, well, you can program the rear dial. I haven't figured out how, and how that would override what's, for example, if you want aperture control, how it would override the lens. But then you you have to ask, well, what's the point of having all these manual controls if it's not actually gonna make your shooting more efficient? Anyway. That's ergonomics. Uh, I will also say this, this grip is puny. It, I get it, it's not a huge deal. I understand it keeps a slim profile and all that, but I feel like there were things they could have done better to make it feel more comfortable to hold. Even my Canon M50 feels more comfortable to me because it has a more rubberized grip, so it sticks to your fingers a bit more. Uh, setup took me a couple of hours, nothing was, horrible, but the Canon menu system is better. This is not a deal breaker. Um, I don't really even navigate the menu systems that often once I have set up the camera the way I like. And so far I've been able to do that. As far as back button focus, it took me a while to figure out how. Once I did it, it didn't really work for me because it felt clunkier on the Fuji. A lot of that had to do with the controller being slow to shift your focus point. It, there's just too many, I think, for it to travel. I wish there was a way to increase its sensitivity. That would be awesome. But I think the solution for me is going to have to be to reduce the amount of focus points I'm using if I want to shoot that way. Um, that said, I ended up switching back to the out of the box focus mode and all that. Uh, I like that this camera starts to track the subject right away before you even touch the shutter halfway or anything. So by the time you're actually holding it halfway or going from not pressed at all to all the way, it's much quicker. I actually really like that. The face and eye detect is incredible. It works very well. I've only missed one shot so far using it. I think a lot of the fumbling around I have to do will no longer be an issue the more time I spend with this camera. I think it could ha there are some improvements that could be made, but 
mostly ergonomics. I think it would be a nicer, I wish they could make it a nicer camera to hold. Canon has a way of putting everything where you expect it to be. And I haven't felt that way entirely with the Fuji. The auto exposure lock and, you know, AFL, it's not really exactly where I'd want a back button focus to be. I probably would want it to be where the Q is. I can't program that, I don't think. If someone knows how, that would be awesome. Then I would probably use the back button focus because it's so close to the joystick and I don't have to maneuver too much. I think if I'm keeping this camera, I probably am, I will want to get a better grip. I'll probably get the battery grip. It is true, the batteries aren't great, uh, but also to have more of a camera to hold. So now I wanna talk about my biggest concern I had trying a new camera, and that is that all mirrorless cameras seem to be clunkier to me than using a DSLR, and a lot of people are gonna start going crazy on me, but hear me out. With a DSLR, I can position the focus point so well without turning the camera on. Well, of course, to turn, I have to, okay. With the traditional DSLR, that joystick works right away, whether the screen is on or not. With the Canon R, I wasn't able to maneuver, for example, my, because you have no joystick, I wasn't able to maneuver my focus point if the screen wasn't activated. Uh, that was an issue, and it slows down my shooting process. I very much, I'm not framing up an image and waiting for something to happen. I'm usually seeing that something is about to happen, and that's when I take my shot. I need the camera to be able to be operatable. Operatable? Operable? Uh, before it actually hits my eye and that leads me to another issue I had with a lot of the mirrorless cameras and it doesn't mean it can't be overcome I'm sure I can figure out a solution and there are things that can be changed in the menu, but I Don't want to have to wait for the camera to meet my eye for me to be able to operate the camera And so far a lot of the mirrorless options seem to have that issue this camera had the least out of the box uh, when I tested them out, and that's one of the reasons I actually wanted this camera. Um, I know that seems like a small minor thing, but to me it wasn't. But that said, I think these new autofocus methods are getting so good that maybe it's a moot point and I don't need a camera to work the way I used to work, and I'm kind of having this philosophical debate right now in my head about what to do. Um, so I'm trying it. I'm trying to embrace like face and eye detect. Um, I think I, there is a part of me that's frustrated because I've spent 10 years getting really good at spot focusing on the eye manually, and it's going to be hard not to do that. I drive a classic car with a manual transmission. When I drive an automatic car, I still put my hand on the shifter. You know, old habits. So we're going to see. I'm going to see if I can make this camera work for me as a you know, not a specialty item as in something I pick up when I don't want to work or or something I use to supplement a Canon camera. I want to see if I could actually use this as effectively as I can with the Canon camera. I'm not looking to make a huge shift or anything, but right now I was underwhelmed by the Canon R. I do want to try it out a little bit more, um, but I know the Canon R isn't going to replace my 5D based off what I know so far and I'm probably going to upgrade to whatever the Canon R's bigger brother is, which will probably come out in the next six months, I'm thinking. Tops a year, and I don't need to upgrade my main shooter, to be honest. This is going to let me do stuff I can't do with my main shooter, but upgrading that to like the Canon R or a Sony a7 III is not really essential for me to get my, the work done I need. So I wanted something very different, and I think the Fuji is giving me that both spec wise but also from the experience and experience of using gear really matters to me all right that's it for today i will have more impressions on this camera i'm gonna do um a continuing series of these videos i don't want to give people what everyone else is doing you know these bullet point reviews where you know they're rushing to get it out because they want likes and i don't know if that gives any value i mean how many of those reviews can you watch where it's the same thing and if you want a rundown of the specs you know go online just Google search the specs of the Fuji. I don't see any value in me giving that to you. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're curious about Fuji, let me know if you have any questions. I'm really liking this camera a lot so far. I have very few to complain about, very few things to complain about. I'll see you guys soon.